Welcome back to another video. Today's video is gonna be about how we can use motion blur and speed ramping to make our edits a lot better. It's a very gloomy day outside today. So dark, what the heck? In here, in Premiere Pro or whatever software of your choice, but I'm gonna use Premiere Pro, I have two shots. Uh, both of them are drone shots because they are the cleanest ones I could find that I've had. So we're using these drone shots. Let's go ahead and find out where we want to bring the shot in. We can see that this shot moves from here and it moves up and we want to speed ramp that part where it's like doing the movement upward. We're gonna drag this first shot into our timeline. Now we have our sequence. Let's find out where the camera starts moving. Right about there, that's good. And we know that right here, it moves up and then it flies off, right? So we're gonna stop the shot roughly right there. Uh, and we'll do the same here. We'll drag this other shot in here and this shot is moving and we wanna let's speed ramp it from right here and we wanna speed ramp to about that point there. First of all, I wanna take my layer itself and make it huge just so it's easier to work with. Go back to our first clip in this little uh, FX panel right here, right click it, time remapping and speed. We're gonna do this with both shots. So time remapping, speed. Now both shots are set up for speed ramping to be applied to it. Go to your effect controls, have that open right here. We're going to go ahead and choose the point where we want it to start. Hold down command on your keyboard or control. Click on the line that you see pop up in the middle of this right here. And that will create a keyframe or a point on that time remapping. You can also see, which is why I had you open effect controls, the keyframe it makes right here in your effect controls in case you want to work down there instead. Let's find the point where we want our speed ramp to stop. I think right here is good. Again, command and control, click there, and that's good. So now let's do that to our next clip as well, just because we're working on two at the same time. Uh, I want it to start right about there. So command, control, click, and then I want it to end here. Back to our first shot. Remember, we started our keyframe here. So we want this whole section in the middle between each point to be way faster. Click and drag that line up. That's all we're doing until we see our number, the percentage right there, crack up to like 2000-ish. Here it is, and it's gonna speed ramp right about now. And that looks rough and a little too slow. So two things we're gonna do. One, speed it up for, for one. Let's bring it to like three or 4,000-ish. It's a little rough and jagged, so we're gonna click on this and you notice how there's two little frame thingies there. I don't know what you call those, but two little flags if you would. Click that one and drag it. Click this one and drag it that way. We'll watch it back. Whole lot better. It already looks really good and we're almost done, but there's a couple more pieces to so just stick around. We know we have another shot. So let's click and drag this one back in our timeline. I like this shot, but let's say right here is where I want the speed ramp, which we've already set up our keyframes. All we do now is just click and drag and repeat the process. And play it back. Now, I don't think it's fast enough, so I'm gonna bring it to like 4,600, and that, that is more of what I'm going for. Now, you could be like, okay, I'm done, but you're not. And only because there's one more thing we need to apply to this to make that feeling of the fast sped up movement more natural feeling, and that is motion blur. Now, Premiere Pro does not have just a motion blur drag and drop effect, so we're gonna make it ourselves. And the first thing we wanna do is nest our clips. You don't have to nest it. I like to nest them individually, not together, because I find that the time remapping effect paired with the effect we're about to apply kind of has some buggy problems and I don't want to run into that. So I nest them and then I just scan through to where I see the speed ramp start, which should be right about there. Here, now we go to our effects panel. Effects panel, I can't say the word. Type in directional bore, and you can see under video effects bore and sharpen directional bore. Double click or drag it onto your footage. Go to effects controls and scroll down. Now you can see directional bore as a effect that you can modify, and that's what we're going to do. Leave your playhead where it is, because we know that that is where the directional bore should start, because that's where the speed ramp starts. Directional bore works this way. Direction is the angle, right? You can see that it's zero all the way to 360 and then it will repeat. So we know that zero and 180 are up and down and then 90 and 270, right, are side left to right. Because we're moving from the bottom to the top, that's up to down, let's leave our direction unkeyframed at zero. We don't need to touch it. But blur length, we want to keyframe, keep it at zero. We want to pan through here until we find the end of the speed ramp, which is right about there, I'd say. We're going to keyframe that and zoom in with this bar here so we can get a nicer look. Find the middle between those two keyframes, both set to zero. And then we want to just push this to like, I don't know, 20, maybe 25. Now that you did this, we can actually right click this one, ease out, ease this one in, and then uh, let's just play it. And that's that. So um, just another one, just to show you the second time and then we're done here. See the speed ramp start there. Go to effect controls, scroll down. This time around, because we're moving left to right, we need to keyframe our direction and our bore length, both of them to zero. Remember, pan through to the other end where it ends, which is roughly about here. Keyframe these both at zero. That way we know it's gonna start and stop at zero motion bore. 
And in that center, we're gonna keyframe the motion blur so we know that's where the most motion occurs. Find that center point, which is roughly about there. And now we notice that the blur is still up and down. That looks wrong. So go ahead and type in 90. And if we watch this back, and that's that. That's good enough to me. I'm gonna call it a day there. I hope this helped you guys. Apply this to your own footage, post it, tag me in it, let me see it. I would love to watch it. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope it helped you. And I'll see you guys in the next video, which is again, Friday, as well as a short film type of thing that's coming out soon. I, I'm looking forward to posting that one. So until then, I will see you. Thank you for watching. What am I doing here? Goodbye.